what happens is uh, you need to uh, save your solution okay on keep intervals okay because it may sometimes crash because of our memory leakage or something or it may be something like um, something you uh, closed it by mistake or something so our unsaved work will not will not be there again okay so i recommend you keep on uh, saving because most of the time you will also see us keep on clicking on the save button to uh, while we are uh, writing the automation script okay so in that way it's it's a good practice to always save our work although there is a folder okay there is a folder there uh, if you check there is a folder in the back end called auto save okay so in the auto save folder uh, we we can we can see the some some things which are automatically get saved so maybe just have a look once again uh, if you uh, see some something inside that auto save that means it's it's automatically saving something because i also faced some some issues previously where um, the unsaved work got um, discarded or we are not able to see the unsaved work but in that way we can go through and check it again okay so you can try uh, that as well and i hope uh, whatever things we have done till now everyone i mean each one of you i uh, should be able to apply it okay whether it's a flow control whether is a or whether it's a variable declaration or where we are setting a value overriding the value of a variable or it's passing the environment url or anything okay so that should be clear to all of you and uh, if any doubts you can definitely ask in between okay so we can discuss whatever we have because every day we will be having a new topic so we will be getting more into it and then if previous things are not clear then definitely will 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 be causing problems later on okay so that is it and in the excel um, you already see how we can read the value okay very easily using the excel action uh, which is uh, definitely a, a very good action where we can directly perform it or um, either we can write something into the excel okay so that is that is also we have seen so now what we will do today uh, we will we will learn some advanced concepts like a retry mechanism okay what is actually a retry mechanism and how it works okay and we will also see some other things today okay like the reporting part which is the very important part how we can see the reports in ginger okay so let me start sharing my screen and as as discussed previously we will be creating the new project okay so here's my screen let me start sharing okay so we will be we will be creating our new solution this time okay create new solution so i will name it as a practice day 4 okay and i will save it in the same um ginger projects directory okay because all my projects of ginger are here at this location only and i will select my target application as web app and i will click on create so this should be very much um very much clear to you all of you now because we have done this multiple times okay so here we can we can see one business flow automatically created one activity created okay but uh, i will be using the environment one so i will be configuring one quickly one environment as we discussed previously as well to we should have some environment some agents in our project okay that looks like a, we are working on a project we are working we are following some framework or some stuffs okay so here i will add the url as my parameter and let me go to any website let's suppose i will be working today on some real estate website called housing.com okay any website you can take uh we will taking live website because there we got good challenges okay otherwise we can if we take dummy website something like that then definitely there are simple controls which we can do it easily 
now we have configured the environment now we will go to the configuration tab okay so in the configuration tab okay <clears throat> Here's the agents, okay? So in the agent, I will be creating a new agent and that will be my Chrome agent, okay? Because I want to perform my operations in the Chrome browser, okay? So I will click on finish, okay? This thing. So I will click, you can see I can, I'm hitting click, clicking on save again and again so that if there is a crash or there is something i will not be able to save it should be saved okay so now what i will do i will create a new business flow instead of that i will create new folder first okay so i have a folder called develop because these are the habits okay if you build this kind of habits it will be very easy for you later otherwise what happened is like we all are human we make mistakes and we are not able to do this again and again okay so i will just create one business flow where i will be testing this housing website okay just an assignment for me let's suppose to do some housing website stuff so i went into it this is the first activity i will name it as search property okay because it's a housing website i need to search the property so my activity, we should be a proper naming convention that it is for the search property. It's a test case, which is uh, regarding the searching the property. Okay. Now, the first thing I will do is I will map my Chrome agent. Okay. Because I will be running on Chrome and the environment is ENV1. Okay. So that should be clear. Now, what I will do is I will go to my action library and in the platform action, I will select the browser action. Okay. So in the browser action, I will pass the URL and that URL will be coming from environment parameters. So this thing we have done multiple times. I hope you, this thing is already clear to you all that how we can parameterize some URL from the environment. Okay, so you can see here uh, in the environment one, are we getting the correct URL? It's getting amazon.com. Why so? Uh, in the resources, we have environment one. Here we have environment. I click on save. In the business flows, here is the environment one. If I go to open the expression editor and click on play, ah. It's giving me environment one as Amazon. Let me try to run this once, okay? Because this there's some cache maybe, okay? Uh, it's opening Amazon out there. Um, okay. Housing website. Need to rename the business law as well. So meanwhile, you all can also create your own business flow. Okay, one solution, one business flow. I just do with me because may, maybe I will be then move very quite forward ahead and you will be practicing be behind me. So that's why let's let's try to um, do till this point. Okay, everyone should be able to uh, create a new solution um create a new business flow okay configure an activity and an action okay and just just update me once it's done and an and environment we need to create environment as well yes we need to create environment we need to create one business flow we need to configure one activity and one action in that that is a launch url okay i'm just quickly restarting my ginger because I'm not sure when exactly I, I restarted it. Yes, I mean, last time, maybe four or five days before, three days before. So I will be opening a fresh new instance of it. Meanwhile, please practice and please create a new solution and a new activity as well.
Okay, I restarted, it's working fine. I will add this action. Please let me know once it's done. So we'll just quick recap. Solution, newly solution, create solution, new environment, new agent, new business flow, new activity, and one action. That is the browser action and launch URL. Did we create uh, this, this particular uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, this particular uh, variable is created in environment. Yes, we go to resources tab, we go environment tab. Okay, here in this environment, if we if you expand it, you can see your web app, your platform. And here in the parameters, we created this URL. Uh, hello, Pratik. You are done? Yeah. Um, when I go to value expression editor. Yes. From the, the action. Yeah. Operations uh, environment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then when I click the play button, mm -hmm. it didn't uh, display the housing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because here you can see in the background here environment should we have selected mm -hmm. default, I think. So default environment doesn't have URL parameter. The URL parameter is inside ENV1 or whatever environment you have created. Okay. Just cross check if you have selected the drop down from the drop down the previous the correct environment. Yes, I put the housing.com inside the mm -hmm. uh, environments under resources. Okay. But have you selected from the drop down here? You can see my cursor. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Here you have selected the from the drop down the correct the, the created uh, environment. Yes. And now you are clicking on play and you are not able to see results here. You are seeing like this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The that... URL is not displaying. Yes. So if that is the case, maybe your parameter is not saved. So you will be seeing some star over here. Just click on the save button or do one thing right click on it and click on save parent environment okay all right i'll try anything yeah Thanks. because this is not currently saved and it's the expression editor is not able to um check the unsaved changes okay so you need to save the environment correctly and then try it So those who have done it, uh, just try to run this action, okay? So that and check if it's able to launch the website at your end.
anyone facing any issue just let me know we can discuss yeah um i encountered the same issue with aleli but mm -hmm. uh upon checking the environment um selected in the activity or mm -hmm. the business flow mm -hmm. um it's not yet um selected to the environment that we created so okay. that's why we cannot um i was able uh, to do that okay. so yeah. yeah so what's happening is currently if we don't save it environment either you will not see in the drop down the environment or yeah. if you're seeing in that environment um if you select it and the parameter is not saved properly then you will not be able to play the value two things okay one thing is like the drop down in the drop down environment itself is not visible yeah that means that's why um, it's the, not playing yeah or it's not, that means um, the environment is not saved so you can just right click on the app and click on save parent environment once Yep. go to the resources tab and just right click and save uh one thing so you will be seeing the environment here now okay if it is there then just try to go to the express yep. editor and check uh it's now working perfect thanks man thank you so now let's move ahead and let's discuss okay i have i have just launched the url i hope you all are able to also launch the url so now what we will do uh we will move ahead and we will do some flow on this website okay so let's suppose here the in the drop down i need to provide some value okay the city name where exactly i want to buy some property okay so uh, the, there are multiple ways okay you can do it the same thing um one thing i will i will just tell you is like you can click on inspect okay and once you inspect something um you can point out this using this inspector and you can go to this point and you can say oh this is input tag name and the type is text placeholder is some city name whatever is at your location and there is a class okay so can anyone help me in writing the x path of this we want to try if you can try just uh, write the x path and paste in the chat box just try writing the xpath for this particular element and paste in the chat let's see what we have okay so we got one from romel okay that there is an input tag name with a uh, type attribute name as a uh, text okay but romel uh, don't you think this can be multiple results because i can see two of the text box yeah. i'm already seeing here yeah <laughs> okay so perfect try and very good approach and it will work as well i'm not saying it will not work but it has multiple results so can we get something which 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 is uh, unique okay wow john has given some with the class okay the class is search dash bar css a t e l d r okay that's that, that's a perfect one okay we get a one perfect one which gives only one result but just one i can i, I have one suggestion that there are some white spaces in the class value so can we try something with uh, mm, but you guys are doing perfect you guys are doing amazingly well okay because uh, at this level at the initial level you are writing these kind of expats very correctly i mean um, the tag names are correct the attribute name and its values and the syntax putting the value in the quotes closing the brackets perfect perfect oh romel has come with a contains one yeah so slash slash input contains 
at the rate class comma CSS AT LDR. That's the perfect one because we don't have white spaces here now. Okay. Um, but one suggestion is like uh, when we write these kind of X paths, okay. Um, instead of value as CSS, can we use the search? Okay, because because it's a search city. Okay, search bar. So the same one which which Rommel has used, I will be using the same thing. But definitely, guys, you guys are perfect. You have tried it using contains that really it really appreciates like you are doing this kind of stuffs. Okay. So just now I changed with a search one. Okay, the class contains search. So I'm using the same X path. I copied it. I go to the platform actions, action library, platform action, UI element action. I go inside this element action. I will choose it that I want to do it by X path. I will copy paste to the X path. And what is this? This is a text box. Okay, so just a text box. And I'm putting a value, maybe the city as Dubai. Okay. So we'll also have a proper description to enter value in search city. Okay. So whatever be the search city text box is there, I want to enter a value. Okay. That value will be my city name that is Dubai which I don't want to hard code. I will be storing it into a variable. So I will go to the string variable. Okay. And inside that string variable, I will name the variable as okay. A C T city name. And I will put the initial value as Dubai so that I can use that in my action. I will rename this. I will parameterize it with activity variable city name. So just let me know if you are at till this point. So I hope Ellie joined back after restarting her laptop. So yeah, it's working now. <laughs> perfect. So we have just yet not done anything. Just we have added one more action that is a UI element action, and we provided this expat what uh, Romil and John has suggested to me in the chat. Okay, so using this expat, I'm putting a using a element type as text box and a set value operation and i just provided the name of the variable in which my city is there um, i'm searching for dubai basically currently so here is the dubai which is inside my variable now if i change anything from dubai to anything from this variable it will automatically get reflected okay. Okay. in my action So I will also try to run it and check if it's working. Yes, it's working. It entered the value as Dubai perfectly. Just like yeah, it works on my end. end. Working fine, yeah? Yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect. So now if you guys have noticed here, okay, the thing is the way we do manual is different. The way we do with automation is different. Why? Because if you do it manually, you will come here, you will write D-U-B-A-I, okay? And you will select a particular city from the, from the suggestions, okay? Like the suggestions like this, okay? However, when you do it by automation, it just enters a value. So maybe sometimes, it's not taking it properly because you have not selected from the suggestion. Remember, many websites have such kind of Ajax control where we have to manually select from the suggestion only. You are not supposed to type directly and enter. Okay. So for that purpose, how we will get the suggestion? We are not getting the suggestions. So what we will do is uh, we will basically use the send keys operation. Okay, there is a difference between set value 
and send keys okay you should be very clear here guys why send keys send keys is nothing but typing some value sending the keys what are the keys your keyboard keys mm -hmm. hitting the keyboard keys okay okay so when you try to do it send keys you can you will be seeing the suggestions as well okay because now it's a double dubai but um, if i remove it and i try to run this now it will give you the suggestions as well and you can see the cursor here okay otherwise if you set a value it will just directly parse the value getting my point what is the difference between set key set value and send keys send keys basically sends the keys so that you will get a proper manual Im impression that you are doing it manually but if you set a value it will just parse the value inside the text box like in the back end okay clear everyone so now what happening is okay now we are doing send keys as well but still we are not getting the suggestion so what i am going to do is i will just copy paste this action i will copy this and i will paste it okay as we do previously and i am seeing here in the in the description to click get suggestions okay because i want to first i want to perform click operation as well and this time this is again a text box okay and i can see if i don't have i will i can consider it as a hyperlink as well and i want to perform a click okay so just i will try to run this action and now you can see it's giving me the suggestion it just clicked on it to get the suggestions okay clear everyone so if we write like this and click over here it will give us the suggestions so that is what i'm doing here in my automation as well that i search for a value i enter the value and i click to get the suggestions so i click here and i get the suggestions okay so i will be selecting from the suggestion i'm not directly doing it clear so this is just important part because we cannot do every time like these things so we we have to do it this way as well to to pass it via send keys and to perform a click operation and once i ap apply the click i need to select the value so i need to write an x path for this okay so if you see if i inspect this element this is an li tag name with the text dubai so i will write slash slash li and then i will write text equal to dubai like this okay because you know we can use attribute name value pair as well as well as text and value pair as well so i will again add a ui element action okay and i will name it as click on result whatever the result is it will be via x path i will pass the x path i will put it as an hyperlink and perform a click operation and i will click on run and it passed and now it's selected from the from the suggestion okay so now if i if i run the whole activity again okay it will launch the url okay it will it will relaunch the url and oh now i'm getting some pop up yeah so now you can see it it will try it's trying to click on dubai results but it's not actually getting it so let me do one thing i will be coming on this as well i will add a wait of 1 second over here because that the suggestion sometimes takes time to reload and let's try to rerun the activity again to check if this works fine now okay i will just relaunch this website once again restart the agent so that i will be having a fresh page because dubai dubai i have typed multiple times so that's why the suggestions are not taking place properly but you should you should try this on your own what is the difference between the set value and the send keys okay even you can try to automate google.com okay 
where you can search for any of the string okay so there also you will you will have to use this the same thing okay the same way so now once i perform a click operation over here i'm not seeing the dubai city okay why i'm not um, i'm not able to see it is because once it's send keys okay like this and it's try to click on it it is not properly clicking getting the suggestions of the dubai it's, it's getting suggestions of all the cities what i have here in the initial okay. phase okay okay i mean to say like any any of the cities okay and there there we have dubai in the last i mean we have to scroll a lot so that's why the results are not getting updated but my whole idea is you need to use the send keys okay to perform this one you need to perform the send keys operation to to pass the value okay similarly similarly let's suppose i create a new activity okay i will i will just save this one you can see if there is a star over there that means you have not you have unsaved changes okay so always remember to save it again and again let me close this browser and let me create a new business flow okay let's suppose i want to do the same thing on google.com okay and just just for i'm i'm doing one one more try for google.com to perf to show you the send keys why because when you enter a value via set key set value it directly puts it inside the dom document object model that you see in the developer option but you perform a send keys it will pass the keys one by one okay so here if i have the same action as browser action and i have go to url http as for now i'm not passing from environment parameter i'm just passing it from directly from the browser and i click on run current action this will open definitely a new browser for me to open google.com and there also i have a text box where exactly i want to feed a value to search a particular string okay so when we when we search for a particular string in google.com there also we get several suggestions like here like this right so um, i will be adding one more action quickly ui element action and i will be doing it here as which operation it may be xpath slash slash input at the rate name equal to q i remember the xpath now from google.com because i have automated it multiple times and this is a input text box where i need to once i will have to set value or i can do send keys and write automation okay so here if i close this one and i give it here search value try to run this activity now so this will open a new browser with google.com and will search for a value automation in the text box okay it happens in this way um that all the actions will be running in a sequential manner okay whatever you configure it first will be running the first whatever you configure second will be get it running as the second so you now can see the blinking of the cursor is still here means you are passing it via send keys okay and now you can select any of the option let's suppose i inspect this okay and um, here i want to search for this particular automation string so i will write slash slash span text equal to automation now copy this x path and i will add a new element new uh, ui element action and i click on suggestion so this is i will give it as click suggestion and operation type it will be again an x path will pass the x path i will search i will it's a hyperlink basically so i perform a click operation if you if i run it okay you can see it search for the automation okay like this now the one thing i want to tell you here is that string automation i don't want to hard code here 
as you all know but i don't want to hard code anything here okay and if i open google.com let's suppose I, I search for this string automation okay and i i pass it away to a variable the same way we have done previously as well i will add a variable and that string variable will be my act underscore search string so whatever i want to search i will pass in this variable i will not hard code it okay so this variable i will be passing it here in the expression editor i will remove the hard coding value and i will pass it via activity variable that is my act search string you can play it you can see automation is there perfect but if you see the suggestion here i'm hard coding again in the x path okay so what you can do you can even parameterize inside the x path that whatever i search i want to see it via contents you got it what i'm doing here i'm not passing any hard coding value in even in my x path i have parameterized that x path with my variable value and why i'm doing this because whatever i'm searching on the initial page the same value i want to search so okay. so what i understand is to parameterize even anywhere if you use curly mm -hmm. braces it mm -hmm. will act it will assume it's a parameter and it will look for a uh, it's variable somewhere and find its yes. value. Yes, correct. I mean, wherever you see these three dots as an expression editor, there you can parameterize any value. So not sure, not not compulsory that you want to parameterize it always. Yeah, yeah I understand. Okay. So my question, one more thing is that is, is this the bare name? I, I know because we are doing it over here, it's easier. But it's mm -hmm. it is. I, I can't just parameterize as x string. I'll have to look at the bare name is equal to x. Mm -hmm underscore such string so that it knows it's a variable am i right this is the syntax yes it's a syntax um it, it's the basic syntax and you don't need to remember this because if you double click on any of the variable it will automatically get populated yeah but yeah. this is the yes this is the the syntax you need to understand like it's a var name and uh, the var name should be this and i'm i want to get the value of this var name and parameterize it here okay okay thank you Perfect. So now if I try to run the same thing again, the run activity, it will launch a browser, it will open google.com, it will search that particular string automation, um, which is in my variable part. Okay. And that variable only I'm using again to create an X path, parameterized X path, so that I'm not hard coding anything anywhere in my pro in my in my th this thing. Okay. Yeah, fair. and I understand that. For example, if there's a temporary variable as well, mm -hmm. uh, we can pass in a temporary variable and use it in an X path or something. We have scenarios yes. where we don't know beforehand its value, but we read it. And as we did it yesterday's example, we read that value, put it in a variable, mm -hmm. and use that variable in an X path or somewhere just okay. to check it out. Yes. So, for example, uh, okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. So let's suppose a, uh, just a best example. You create a customer. That customer ID you fetched from the UI store it in a variable and after that you need to check via xpath or parameterize it to check if that that xpath is correct i mean that customer id is correct you can pass the customer id over here okay something like this so now we will be going through the different types of variables okay which is very important guys please understand this one carefully because most of the time you will have to you create the random strings random numbers and all those stuffs okay because let's suppose um, you need to create a random string uh, number, okay, to pass it as a um, mobile number for, for let's suppose you want to create a customer, a uh, telecom customer, which is having a mobile number of any random nine digits or 10 digits, okay. So there you can create a variable, okay, random number. You can see a sixth number, variable random number. You click on add variable, okay, and let's name it as this will be my random mobile number okay and this is again my activity variable so i mean be prefixing with act and here you can give the range okay so 
what exactly I want is I want some number of 10 digit okay so 3 3 6 3 9 okay and 110 this is my minimum value and this is my maximum value so any number in between this range okay I will be getting I, I want to get any random number uh, between this range okay so here I get give, give the minimum value and the maximum value whatever you want to do okay so it should be something like this if you want to generate a random number of 10 digits okay clear so if you if you have added this okay and you want to use it in your act business in your activity then you need to go to yeah, my question is this uh, yes. this this will this random number will be generated different every time we run the test case yes yes so that's but when I, when I I tried it with a string yesterday, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the string it was uh, uh, can you go back can you go back to this thing the uh, yes. uh, variable yeah uh, for example uh, so they, they, there is this lightning uh, uh, top right there is this lightning uh, you know icon yes uh, above this lightning icon. with that it only when I click this it generates a new value yes. here yes yes Perfect. but when I run it uses the same value again and again. Mm -hmm yeah for string i didn't try for number okay okay let me do it so if i check this integer i will get the integer first of all okay so that i will get only integers not in the decimal okay so you mm -hmm. can see this is three three nine three ten half huh? okay so this is a 10 digit random number you can each time you click on this random thing okay. it is creating a random number but oh, no. we will not be keep clicking it at runtime manually we have to do it in our scripts so for that purpose, you need to add an action called set variable action. Okay. Uh, okay. Add set variable action and select your random number. That is random mobile number. And here the operation should be auto generate value. Ah, it's okay. I was just playing around. That's why probably I didn't okay. know that. Yes, <laughs> okay. yes, yes, yes. I just thought you do it. So it will... yeah. Now I've got one more question. Two things. Yeah, yeah, sure. uh, I'm sorry. Hopefully I'm not uh, uh, now others wrong because these are valid question because See, for example, in Australia, uh, this every number starts with 0, 4, every mobile number. Yes. Okay. So if I generate auto number, I can't guarantee that it will. Uh, so can I give it a pattern that it, it, it doesn't care what rest of the numbers are, but the first mm -hmm. two numbers have to be 0, 4 or plus 6, 1, 4, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. So how do we make sure those things? So it's yes. that, so that pattern. Was... And for example, email, especially yeah. emails, yes. random emails. Yes, yes, yes. So let's suppose I just created this random mobile number and this as a prefix, I want to generate. I'm a, sorry, am, am I going ahead? No, <laughs> this no, no, this thing in the flow? No, this, is, this is the valid question. Okay. So what yeah, because doing? what happened yesterday, I, I tried a lot doing that. I was playing yeah. around last evening. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> I so couldn't I will, get it right. I create a variable string. Okay. Let's yeah. suppose. And I will name it as, uh, this will be my email. Okay. Uh, I will name it as ACT underscore email okay so i just created a normal string variable act underscore email mm -hmm. and now what i will do is that randomly generated mobile number i will use it here again a set variable action okay so one set variable action to is to auto generate the random number the another mm -hmm. set variable action i have added to pass that random number inside this act email okay what i will do is I'll go to the activity variables that particular random number which i just auto generated will mm. come here and will pass mm. it at the rate gmail.com okay or i could I, I got it and uh, uh i just give you a bit of this thing for example i generate uh, th these are 10 numbers including 04 so i generate a random random number for eight numbers mm -hmm. and append 04 before that yeah you can do that as well you can do it yeah so 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 so, so every, every every time Every time that a number number is generated, uh, yeah. So if, if I do zero four, it will add a zero four at the start of this. Yes, thing, always. Yes. So let's try to check this and just run this action. It get passed, and you can see in the description, the variable ACT email value is now set to zero four. Then ah, uh, got, got it, got it, got it. Thank you, thank you. So sorry, you, you, you see that that's what is training about because I tried doing it like <laughs> I spent at least an hour doing this. Yes. Set variable. Okay, thank you. Please carry on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Because I was very concerned about this random generation, mm -hmm. because we probably I see 
a lot of requirement for us to generate data. Mm -hmm. I mean, creating 20 different kinds of customers and that will, we can't reuse mobile, we can't reuse email addresses because you know, these real systems which you're testing, yes. it will flag this thing that Emil uh, mentioned also. Yeah, mm -hmm. very important part for us. Interesting. Thank you very much. Yeah. But just remember when you have a, a random number, then only you will get this auto generate option from the drop down. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you get a normal string variable, okay, and this is the active ran this is a random number. I I intentionally choose this. The the type of this variable is a random number, variable random number. But if you have a set variable action with only variable string, okay, you can see here set value, reset value, and clear special characters. These three operations you can perform on variable string. However, you can perform auto generate operation on list variables as well as the random string and random number variables. So this operation is very important. Perfect. This is this is good. Now let's. I hope everyone is clear. Shalin, uh, John, Romel, or Lily, all good. This point, creating them different types of variables. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. So another type of variable is we have list variable. Okay. So maybe very less, but you may need to create a list variable. Okay. So what does this list variable do? Let's see. So it's a list variable. Let's suppose I have a list of, um, I will just take some examples is like ACT underscore customers. Okay. So the customer is basically a particular list of variable. It should not be above anything. So I have two types of customer. One is called my prepaid customer, which pre pays me beforehand. And one is my postpaid customer, which pays me after paying my bills, after generating the bills. Okay. So these two list variable I created. Okay. These are the list values. You can do it via comma separated. Okay. And once you can see here is the formula. I mean, these are the different values inside my list variable. So now the list variable concises only two values. Okay. Either prepaid or postpaid, nothing else, no third value. Okay. So we can put it as a, is a general string as well, but that general string will have any value. But we don't want to pass any value. We want to pass the customer only with two values, either prepaid or postpaid. Okay. So you can do it like this way. You can define it like this and you can do it like this. And once you want to use it, let's try to do a set variable action. And if we pass this customer, okay, you want to here also, you will get auto generate value because Auto generate means either prepaid or postpaid. It will take from the list any one value. Okay. So just check in the logs in here. Okay. If I click on run action, you can see ACT customer is set to prepaid. If I again, ACT customer is set to postpaid. So any of the list value will be taken randomly. Yeah. But if I want, for example, a particular operation, I want a particular value, mm -hmm. then, uh, I can define set to this value only. Yes, yes, yes. You can set value, okay, to to prepaid only. You that will be passed as a prepaid only. But maybe um, required that from the list value you have to pick any of the list value, not apart from any other from the list value. No, no I, I understand. I understand that. Yeah, because see, you you're right. Some test cases you really don't care, but you want to evenly divide that if yes. it runs two times, one times the prepaid, one by postpaid. Sometimes there is a specific scenario. For example, there is a specific prepaid workflow is different and postpaid workflow yes. is different. Yes. And you want to test that for workflow, then uh, that is handy. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So that is the significance of this list variable. You can pass certain set of list values only to this list variable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and this is so important part. You know, yes. I have <laughs> I have a meeting. Yeah. I was already late with that meeting, but I want to still stay in this, okay. this variable thing because I don't want to miss out on this thing because this is something I find is so, so important for us yes. everywhere. We, you know, we, we deal with data mm -hmm. and generating data is the most important part Definitely. because Excel, um, I, I, I don't know when I, when I last time use any external static data mm -hmm. to be yeah. really honest. We use it sometimes, but it's not yes. very often. Usually you generate data randomly. Correct. 
Uh, okay. Yeah. No way. So help. So the next variable is the variable number. Okay. So here also you can have in this variable number. If you go here, you can see you can pass a range. Okay. The range can be minimum value of any digit and the maximum value of any digit. And you want it into an integer or a decimal. That also. Uh, you can you can pass it okay so the minimum value can be zero and the maximum value can be 255 okay so be below this range i mean during this range you can get the get the value okay if i do this and if i this is the one the you can see in the right hand side reset variable value so whatever be the the the, the initial value it will be reset to that Okay, and here is the undo last changes. So whatever done, you have done some changes. You can do it via undo undo the things. Okay, but in this way we can create a new variable number with a particular range. Okay, so let's do one thing. Let me add this as a act underscore. Uh, this this can be my street number. Okay, so you are creating a customer and you want to pass the street number. So I just created a street number as a number variable, variable number, and I use that again the set variable action. Okay, and I will give this a description as set street number, and I pass that street number. Okay, here also I get an option of set value and reset value, so I can pass thirty four. And if I click on run action, it will set the value to thirty four. Okay, so in this way also you can create any number, okay, any variable number, and if you pass it out of range, okay, that is I passed it from zero to two fifty five, I passing two four hundred, it it will give me an error, okay, it's giving me an error that four hundred is not in range. The minimum value is zero. The maximum value is two fifty five, and you are doing something with four hundred, not allowed. Okay, getting my point. So, what's the difference between a normal number variable, okay, and a variable number? Because variable number will have a minimum and maximum range, but in normal variable we cannot. Provide the range we can give any value. So this is just an additional constraint we are adding here. Then the user should have only this between these range. Clear? Now another variable is your password string. So this will be also used many times because you need to provide the login credentials. Okay. So I will write it as act underscore password string. Okay. And here you can see as it's a password variable where whatever I pass, okay. Let's suppose my password is August at the rate two zero two one, okay. I click on outside, it will automatically encrypt it so that nobody else can see this password. Not even I myself, okay. So in that that way you can encrypt the password, but whenever you use it inside your action, it will pass the exact one aug at the rate two zero two one. Okay, it will not pass the any other. It will pass aug at the rate two zero two one only. Why? Because we have passed the original string, but we have now encrypted it by our own. So that's why this this will be encrypted. So that is the use of this password variable, so that we should not share our credentials to anyone. Or just I am sharing my screen to the client, and he will not be able to see whatever value I am passing here. Okay, the password. Clear, everyone. What is the use of this password string variable? Yeah. Perfect. Then random number we already know. we have just created the random mobile number random string okay if you add this variable random string um it will create you a length of the string let's suppose here is the minimum length 3 maximum length 6 
you want alphanumeric you want only digits you want lower case as well as the combination of upper case okay so you can check all of them okay so th there becomes the formula okay that this is the formula you want to use and if you click on this lightning button it says 479 because you have selected digits only if you now select it's it's only capital letters so i will remove the lower and upper i will just have these two things and now if you generate it's giving me a string with numeric as well as alphabetical and i will remove this one so it, you can see i'm getting only uh, the upper case letters okay so in this way you can manipulate if whenever each time you run it you will get different random strings yeah okay so definitely you can create different random strings and add them together it's not at all required that you pass some hard coded strings only like suppose in this one email even we can do we can pass the combination of variables okay before 04 i want to pass the street number okay so even i can do it like this way as well street number so now first my street number that is 34 okay then 04 which i have hard coded okay because it starts with 04 then a random number and add the red. or i want to do one thing i want to add the customer type as well in the starting so now it will be like postpaid then street number then 04 then random string mobile number and then at the gmail.com okay so in this way also you can you can pass them like this so it depends on you how you want to use this, this expression editor and to set the value but these are the different types of variables we can use okay the selection list is also the same thing okay like the, we have the variable list the same way we have the selection list it's a new form of this variable type okay so what is in in this list we will get the values one and two previously in that particular list variable we have to provide it via comma separated okay in this new list variable okay selection list you got the specific values okay so they have not removed it intentionally because previously some of them were using that one previous one so currently we can select the value which you want to select like value one value two this will be the selected value and or for sure you can auto generate them at runtime the same list variable we have seen before and then we have sequence variable this is very important okay the sequence is nothing but the index you remember yesterday we are category in the category we have used the index variable instead of that we can create a sequence variable okay the sequence variable also have a minimum range and maximum range and this will always increment by one only it's not what is the difference between sequence variable and this range variable number variable is number variable if you auto generate it it will give you each time any number between that range okay but if you use this sequence variable each time you auto generate it it will it will be incremented with one only I will show you one example. Let's suppose I give range from 1 to 99. Okay. So each, each time I will auto generate it, it will only increment with 1, not any number between 0 and 99. That is the difference. Okay. Each time you increment it, you will get a new number. And if you want to reset it to the initial value, you can just click on this reset value, it will reset to 0 which is the initial value and uh, we can have any interval two, yes, three, four, yes, five, yes, yes, yes 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 the same way we can have three intervals so it will give you the multiples of three six nine twelve fifteen eighteen so and so forth okay so the interval depends on whatever interval you want to do it okay let's suppose in the excel from the excel you want to take all the odd number of rows you want to read data from all the odd number of rows okay multiple of three or something then then you can use this sequence variable 
each time the variable will be incremented with three okay and then you can read the data from third row then sixth row ninth row twelfth row and so on and so forth okay when you will be actually using it you will find this use the use of this variable is a lot you will see like there is a huge change okay in your scripts in your implementation if you use this kind of variables and specifically as Suhel mentioned that when we have to create random data we have to create bulk data okay because that that's where automation plays a crucial role in creating random data and creating the test data with different combinations because otherwise if you create that data manually and do it via automation there is a very huge time gap okay the same thing you can do it in one hour the same thing you can do it in one minute or quite few seconds okay so therefore exactly the use of this variable will come for you and the string variable this is normal string variable we don't have any number variable we we use this string as a number only because it's kind of dynamically defined okay so either you use it as a string variable or a number variable and specifically the variable timer okay so you can use this as well this is newly added so if you want to add in seconds hours or whatever you want to type you can use it and you can set the variable as a timer okay so these are the different variables i hope you will be using it while doing the assignment okay because when we do you you give you the assignment we'll expect you 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 use most of the things what we have done in the class so just remember guys uh, in the set variable option there are set value reset value what is this reset value it will reset to the initial value whatever initial value was there it may be zero or whatever initialization you have done that will it will reset the value it can clear the special characters as well if you talk about the random string if we talk about the other one okay let's suppose this one this is variable list so you can see auto generate okay this auto generate what it do it will take any value from the list similarly if you have a random number then you will auto generate anything so it will generate auto generate means using that formula it will auto generate a random string for you okay clear so this you can try adding different variables so the main concept i want to go here is now the retry mechanism which is next in our agenda so what is retry mechanism if you go to the flow control tab we have added the flow control in our last class yesterday you remember there are different conditions we can add like action should be passed action should be failed some legacy condition or some custom conditions this is the flow control part but we have a retry mechanism what does that retry means you want to rerun this action this particular action for a particular amount of time okay in a particular interval and for this number of retries you want to do okay so for example this clicking on the suggestion let's suppose i change my x path little bit i give it a wrong x path okay let's suppose i remove this square bracket in the last this is an invalid x path you can see this is an invalid x path because i have removed the square bracket in the last and i have enabled the retry mechanism okay for interval of five seconds okay for number of two times okay let's suppose i pass this as in interval of one second at number of retries as two okay so what will happen let's see if i run this activity now you can see it first launched the url okay and it went here but you can see it tried twice but it is not unable to locate the element but it executed twice let me do it some more time i will have it at seven times i want to keep this action to run seven times to retry it again and again where where actually this will be working on i mean where exactly you will find it its main use is like your element is taking them some time to load which you will see in your sales for application or any application where exactly the spinner is loading okay 
whatever you create some customer or something it takes some time to uh, to reflect on the ui you don't want to fail your script at that moment you don't want to put a hard coded weight at that moment you can perform a retry mechanism okay using this so that it will try for seven times at an interval of one second so let me rerun it again if i run this activity again you can see it first launch the browser it is the first time, second time, then third time, fourth time, and so on and so forth. Seven times it is executing the same action and trying to find the element with that particular uh, X path. Okay. But it says unable to locate an element with this X path expression because this is not a valid X path. The one thing is the weight we are adding here is an hard coded weight. Okay. Like the flow control. You see this in the flow control only you see a weight over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you wait at put a weight of 10 seconds, this is a hard coded weight. That means this action before running, it will wait for 10 seconds. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Whatever happens, it will wait for 10 seconds and then only this action will run. Okay. After 10 ah, seconds, that weight is ah, okay. 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 And what about this weight in the sense that weight to appear kind of thing? It happens. Yes. You know? You're getting yes, it. Yes. 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 I'm so there is no expect. Yeah. yeah. So for that purpose, we have explicit weight Time applied out. on a particular uh, particular element. Okay. So for that purpose, if you go to the platform actions, okay, there is a smart sync action. Okay. okay. So if you go here, smart sync action, let's see what it has. It says wait until display. Uh, you need to it. wait. These are the expected conditions with which we applied in the explicit weight. If you uh, if you remember about the selenium, so there are wait until disappear or wait until display. Wait until yeah. disappear where we can use where there is a spinner. So we have to wait until that spinner disappears. Yeah. So my question would be like for example, I have to click a button. Okay, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the way the website is, it takes a while sometimes for this button to appear. Some heavy loading, yes. you know, yes. it goes yes. back and all. So I can, if I'm using just click on that button, mm -hmm. there is, the test case may still fail because it's still loading, or it waits for load and then wait something like that. Yeah. Or okay. shall I shall I apply this thing, wait yeah. for this until display and then have that action to click? Yes. So one it, suppose there is a button. If you click on that particular button, it takes times to load. Okay, mm -hmm. so you need to check which element appears after clicking on the button and the page reload is done. Okay, yeah. I'll give you one live example. Okay, I have one website. This was I was planning to give them in the assignment, but I will show you here. This is a website, bigbasket.com. Okay, <coughs> ordering the groceries. Let's suppose I go for a vegetable section. Okay, I click on search. Now you can see when it, this page loads, there is a a sorting category you want to sort it by popularity high to low low to high let's suppose i click on this there's a spinner you can see until this spinner is loaded you'll not be able to check for any of the item or you don't want to you, you want to check this checkbox okay so here when you perform any change in the sorting you need to wait until this logo disappears if this loading disappears Okay. Otherwise, you will get a failure in the next action. If after that, let's suppose after sorting, you want to click on this Safola, it will not work for you because there is a loader spin loading, which is hindering in between this checkbox. So you need to wait until that element is disappeared. So there we will use this action and we will say wait until that checkbox that logo is disappeared, that loading spinner is disappeared. Okay. Or the other way you can do it is like, suppose this is the action of clicking on that. You can add a retry mechanism over here that I want to retry after every one interval for seven times. So you know that after seven seconds, it will definitely load. So this one will keep on retrying. Don't add a hard coded weight over here. Put it as zero because it may sometimes take seven seconds, one second, two seconds, three seconds. Okay. So in that way, we can we can work upon. So retry mechanism is very important in case of database actions as well. Okay, and mostly I'm ninety percent I have used this retry mechanism in case of database operations. Like suppose you created a customer, 
and the customer is in the state of tentative T. It is getting activated and comes into status A in the table after few minutes. Now it, the time takes on the depends on the web logic, like it may take five minutes to 50 minutes, whatever time it is. You need to keep on polling every one minute or every 30 seconds that what is my status. So you put a query over there in this action. Okay, database action, we will come upon it, how to connect to the database. And then you keep on polling it each and every time, every, every interval of let's say five seconds, you keep on polling for 700 times. So it will not take actually seven into five, I mean, 3,500 seconds, 3,500 seconds. It will only take the number of retries what is expected. Let's suppose it, it, it comes in three retries. Okay. So I mean, three for 15 seconds, you will get only this action will run only for elapsed time, only having 15 seconds. Okay. So this is the thing and the another checkbox you can the text box you see here is of timeout okay so what is timeout timeout is basically the maximum allowed time you define okay so let's suppose your action is taking a lot of time to load okay so you can pass a timeout over there that i want to just check for this particular action to check for only for 10 seconds i don't want to run it for a long time okay for example for example Let's suppose this, this website only, okay, bigbasket.com. If you go to the home page, that takes a lot of time to load because you can see there are a lot of categories and all and everything is there in the, in the, in the bottom. So these keep on loading for a long time. So let me add a browser action. You all know that if you want to launch a browser, a launch URL, you need to use this browser action. You can definitely put a drag and drop anywhere. I'm, I will be putting it in the last. I don't want to use it in the top. I want to put it in the last ninth number action. Go to URL and I pass this URL. So now if you if I run only specific this action, run current action, it will see how much time it will take. Okay. It's keep on running for three second, four second, five second. It launched it. Okay. But still it's keep on running. Okay. Because there are lots of categories going on in between the bottom and everything. And if it is keep on running, keep on running, we, our scripts are getting hanged basically. I guess because we are waiting a lot of time, but the page is loaded, but still some elements are not loaded. That's why it, it's taking a lot of time. And we want to time out it. We don't want it to run it for a long time. We, we know that it has opened the URL. So just we are good here. We don't want to keep on running it. So you can define a timeout, okay? that this action should run only for 10 seconds after that it should come out, whether it's a failure, whether it's a pass or whatever, but it should come out. So now it took around 55 seconds to load this. You can see 55 seconds. I don't want it like that. I want it to be, to be timed out after 10 seconds. I can just pass the timeout here. And now this will just take 10 seconds to load. I'm in 10 seconds and after that it should come out whether it's a failure or it's a pass. Okay. But after a failure or a pass, it's on me how I want to change the converter of this status of this action. So I want it to be always passed. I can put it as always passed because I know in 10 seconds it will launch the website to me. Okay. I can mark it as ignore fail. Don't mark it as a um, pass, but let it be fail, but ignore it. Don't stop the execution here. This is a valid failure. I know that it will fail. So I put it as a ignore fail. Or I want to invert the status. Let's suppose if it is passed, I want to show it fail. If it is fail, I want to show it as pass. Yeah, right. Like in the in the uh, in the spinner one, the big basket spinner logo. There we can use this invert status. That means if the logo is vanished, okay, that means we have a pass, okay, but the action will automatically fail. So fail will become pass, pass will become fail. So these kind of things you can do your invert status and by default it is none, whatever is pass, so pass, fail, so fail, no timeout or nothing. But whenever you put a timeout over here, maybe your action will fail and you need to pass, you can change it to always pass. 
that yes i know it will pass so i will keep it as passed always passed okay so in that way we can configure the timeout the wait wait is nothing but the hard coded wait it will wait for 10 seconds so let's suppose i put a 10 second wait it will definitely wait for 10 seconds before running this action before executing this action if i wait want to wait a particular amount of time i can put a wait but this is not suggested to put a hard coded wait instead of that you can enable the retry mechanism it will keep on polling once it is get the result either in the first iteration second third fourth fifth sixth or seventh how many number of retries you give it uh, in the same uh, whatever number of retry it, it gets the results it will show you and will mark the status okay so i hope so this thing is clear to all of you 